welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Carmel Valley Pharmacy is a family owned independent pharmacy with a mission to provide the best pharmacy experience possible with exceptional customer service, access to knowledgeable pharmacists and cost friendly prices. Call 858 481 4990 or carmelvalleypharmacy.com. Their friendly staff at their state of the art compounding lab are waiting to help you. Today my guest is Tarek. He's the owner of Carmel Valley Pharmacy. He's also a doctor of pharmacy. Thank you for joining us today, Tarek. Yes, uh, my pleasure. Thank you for uh, having me. Could you give us your background, please? Yes, uh, certainly. I, I've been a pharmacist for uh, almost 21 years. I graduated in 1998 from University of Pacific School of Pharmacy, uh, with the doctorate in pharmacy, and uh, I uh, worked in the ch- different chain pharmacies for um, the first eight years, and then uh, I m- went on to uh, purchase my first pharmacy, an independent pharmacy, and it was retail only. We didn't, we barely did any compounding. Um, went on to uh, buy a few more uh, pharmacies, and uh, we had a lot of success with that. Um, and then about five years ago in 2013, uh, I started uh, Carmel Valley Pharmacy, and I wanted to do something different um, and uh, start with compounding and learn all about integrative and functional medicine that that goes along with compounding. And that has really opened me up to many, many more uh, opportunities and tools in uh, the treatment options. Uh, that are that are available, and and it's just been it's just been an amazing uh, ride, and and process. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, how would you describe your pharmacy now? So my pharmacy now is um, really just focused on customer service and patient care. Uh, we do we're a hybrid pharmacy, which means we do both compounding and then we also do the retail commercially available pharmaceutical products that are made by the pharmaceutical company. So we do both. And, um, and it's a walk-in, people can come in. We do also offer delivery and mailing um, and a lot of consultations. We spend a lot of time uh, between myself, the pharmacist, and the patient, and also interacting with the doctor, getting them involved. And we really do practice the triad of uh, medicine, which is the relationship between the doctor the pharmacist and the patient. Mm-hmm. We are now moving towards um, pharmacists in the UK playing a role. Um, normally, if you wanted any medical advice, you got it from your doctor, you didn't get it from your pharmacist. But mm-hmm. the, it's still not working how it is working in the States because you there, mm-hmm. you just go to the pharmacy and speak to the pharmacist but the pharmacist doesn't relay that back to the doctor. So we don't have it working. It's a bit dysfunctional, really. It's not as as good as what uh, you do. So, Well, it only, it doesn't, it doesn't work that often unless it's a type of pharmacy like I have. In other pharmacies I've been at, which just retail only, it's still, we're still really behind on that also. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just the type of practice I have now is is different, and so now that triad works really well. And it's so good that you look into supplements and lifestyle and things that maybe the doctor wouldn't have chance or time to go through. Absolutely. You know, with um, the seminars I attend, I've learned so much about supplements. And unfortunately, the pharmacy schools and the medical schools are just not, 
getting into that and teaching anything uh, about supplements even to this day. And, um, and so with the seminars, I'm learning a lot and, and doing them on my, starting them on myself and my family members and seeing a significant difference in our own health. And uh, so it's giving me the, the firsthand knowledge to recommend for my patients. And the feedback has been really good and positive, uh, which r- further reinforces you know, and a need to be able to carry on the message to patients who, who need supplements in, in specific areas of, of problems that they have. Mm-hmm. And when did you first hear about LDN? Uh, I think it was a seminar I attended. Uh, I go to PCCA and A4M seminars um, at least a couple times a year uh, just to learn the new things and keep up on my knowledge. And uh, probably about three or four years ago is the first time I heard it brought up at a seminar. And, and, and it, was, it just sounded really exciting and amazing. And I, at the same time, a few prescribers in my area started prescribing it. And, I, and then I was able to spread the word to other prescribers that were open to doing compounds and, and new, new things that they hadn't heard about. And so we've seen it really spread since then. Mm-hmm. And you're in California. So I was just thinking about the supplementation. Do people in California need to take vitamin D or do they get enough sunshine? Uh, I would say they still need to take vitamin D. Um, and because the, I would say just about everybody, ha- the average level of an American, even including California, is 15. And um, anything below 50 is considered deficient in vitamin D. And so, um, and then, but actually, if you're not above 80, you're not considered optimal. And so you don't get a lot of the preventative effects of vitamin D like preventing cancer and really helping to have a healthy immune system. And so by just being at 50, all you're doing is helping keeping your bones healthy, but you're not really helping with the immune system. And, uh, and so going at supplementing, from what I've learned, it's for every 1,000 units you supplement per day, you bring that level up by 10. So if you're at 15 and you take 5,000 units a day, you're going to be at about 65. So you're going to be above the 50 mark, uh, but you're still not going to be optimal. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives an idea of where it is. And and we do see people getting tested when they are taking, and and it kind of, it really does follow along those lines. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been compounding LDN? Um, We've been doing it for probably about four years now. We opened about five years ago, a little over five years ago, and we've been doing compound or LDN for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And what forms do you compound it in? Oral, uh, topical, and transdermal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So when you say oral, is it Mm -hmm. capsules, tablets, a pimple? Yes. 99% 99% of the time, we have done it as a capsule. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a few uh, that we've done in liquid for small children that can't swallow capsules. Okay. Uh, but, and then also, if we want systemic absorption, we can do it in transdermal effect, uh, where we put in a liposome base, so it gets absorbed really well into systemic circulation. And then topically, we've used it for scars, and and or itching type skin reactions we've mm-hmm. seen great effects because usually scars and, and itching and like psoriasis or, or rash um, that's part of the immune response and since we know LDN has a significant effect on our immune system we we've seen we've seen it being uh, having great effect mm-hmm. with use topical and then with, with transdermal we've seen it used when we want in, into systemic circulation especially with small children who, have, uh, who are on the autistic spectrum. Um, they've, they're getting it absorbed really well and, and, it, and seeing great effects with that. Mm-hmm. So do you have any case studies? Case studies. <laughs> you know what I, I mean. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I do. I, I, have, I have seen them um, when they were presented at um, some seminars. I do not have them handy, okay. um, but I, I have seen case studies done uh, specifically, uh, just as an example, I think it was 
the glutathione uh, 20% mixed with LDN 0.5% in a transdermal cream used with autistic children on the spectrum and the significant effect that was that that they, that, that had just by applying that each night mm-hmm. by the parents and just rubbing it be, between the shoulder blades and giving the child a massage at night with the cream mm-hmm. and and the parents the feedback has been really good and we have about five or six uh, small children who get on a regular basis at our pharmacy and the feedback from the parents, they tell me that it's made a huge difference in their children's behavior and their life. Mm -hmm. So how old are the children when they're starting LDN? What age are they diagnosed normally with with autism? Mm -hmm. It definitely ranges, and um, we've seen as small as four or five years old um, I would say probably the most common age is around 10. Mm-hmm. I think there is a level of confusion and denial on the parents' part of not understanding what is going on with the child's behavior when they start to present with autistic behavior around the age of four and five. That um, I, th- I think there's a few years where they're just not understanding what's going on and to t- actually take them to a physician who can do a correct diagnosis. Yes, um, I knew a little boy who was autistic. Um, it's a terrible shock for the parents, I must say. It is. We, we have a nephew in our, in our family that, that is um, dealing with it, and, it, and there was a few years of just not understanding what was going on mm. before the diagnosis was done. Yeah. I, I, I just have to tell you, we... Um, in the first documentary we did, the LDN story, we interviewed a little boy called Jacob, and he's mm-hmm. a piano protege. He can just play Bach, Beethoven, just without looking at music. I mean, he's so talented. But he mm-hmm. uh, was all, I would say was, but uh, of course he still is, but he doesn't show signs of it anymore. But when he was small, he wasn't responsive to his parents. He didn't want to be hugged. He didn't want to be cuddled. And mm-hmm. as he grew older, he just used to fight them the whole time. And regularly, he used to smack his mum across the face. Mm-hmm. And one day, after he'd been on LDN, she was always saying to him, you know, I love you, Jacob. I love you, Jacob. And he just didn't respond. Um, mm-hmm. apart from slapping her, <laughs> slapping her. But this particular day, she said, I love you, Jacob. And he looked at her, and I think he was three or four, and he said, I love mm-hmm. you, Mummy. And she mm-hmm. called her husband, wow. and she said, quick, quick, get the video <laughs> camera. I want to, to ask him again, you know, say it yeah. again, and see if he'll do it, and we will record it, because he may never in his life say it again. You know, I want mm-hmm. to catch it. And he just went from strength to strength a, totally different child absolutely amazing story it is it is Mm. and 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 i think uh, there's many like that with the lts yes exactly and it gives you hope but like you were saying it's the confusion to start with isn't it to to get that Mm -hmm. correct diagnosis so yeah Yeah, that is important Mm -hmm. exactly so with your capsules what filler do you use? Um, there's two different fillers that we use. Um, typically, we started with Avacil, which is just a very clean uh, filler that has no um, side effects, no inflammatory or reactive effects on, especially specifically to patients who have sensitivities. So we never compound with anything that would contain lactose or gluten or cornstarch as a filler. Um, but now there's been a few naturopathic doctors who uh, they love the idea of compounding using the filler ginger root uh, because of its properties, especially with uh, with the gut health and, and just the soothing effect it has on the gut. So that has been one of our common fillers now with uh, LDN and other meds that we compound is using ginger root as a filler. Wow. Do you know, I've not heard yeah. of that before. How interesting yeah. is that? Ginger root. Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Wow. I love ginger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it, it's, a, it's a great idea to mix it with there. Mm-hmm. But of course, being a capsule, you swallow it so you wouldn't notice anyway, would you, that it was ginger? 
Yeah, you don't get the neg- you don't get the bad taste. Yeah. Oh, bad taste! I love the taste of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can it can have some good taste, but uh, but I think the ginger root powder that we you know that we're using it's a clean powder, but I, it does have a little bit of a bitter oh, does it? bitter okay. taste. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what would you say your main patient population is that use LDM? Would you know that? Yeah, uh, I would say it's adults over the age of 18 um, and, you know, mostly getting it in capsule form. The most common dosing that we see is 2.5, 3, or 4.5 milligram, where the, you know, the vast majority is definitely below 4.5 milligram due to the fact that most studies show that the modulating effect of the receptor happens below 4.5 milligrams and we just I don't think there's enough studies out there to know what happens when we go above 4.5 and I think the consensus is there's not really a need to go above 4.5 for most uses and that we're seeing the effect the the response we want below 4.5 without the side effects Mm -hmm. and so that's what we're mostly seeing and the uses just ranges significantly between just gut issues, any autoimmune issue, neurological issues, and pain, um, and on and on. It just seems like they keep coming up with uh, medical diagnosis that they try it on and they're seeing good effects. And, and the side effect profile, even though it's listed as sleep disturbance or vivid dreams, uh, in speaking to my patients, and we have a few hundred different patients getting it each month, the feedback has maybe been one or two has actually told me that they thought they had uh, it affected their sleep. Mm-hmm. But then again, you know, there's a lot of things that could affect our sleep, so it could have been coincident. Yes, it seems to be a drug that is well tolerated. I must mm-hmm. say, from my 15 years of experience of talking to doctors and pharmacists and patients, the people who mainly tend to notice side effects are people that are ultra sensitive to drugs and it's usually people who've got fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome those Mm -hmm. people seem to be so ultra sensitive that they have to start very very low and increase very very slow Um, Mm -hmm. people get there if they're patient um, yeah but yeah if you find it is too much for you it's definitely an idea to have a very low dose and increase slowly. Yeah, and, it's, and, and that's a great point. And the patients who do require the slow titration, tri, titration up, we do the 0.5 milligram capsules, and uh, it's anywhere from every three to seven days they start to increase from one capsule a night to, the, to a second capsule to go to one milligram, and they slowly increase as they can tolerate it until mm-hmm. they get the desired effect, and then we stay at that dose. Okay. I mean, there are some doctors who prescribe up to six milligrams. Some even go higher. But there are quite a few that uh, try six. And with the chronic fatigue, there are some doctors who actually use double dosing um, night and morning. And Mm -hmm. it's reported that those patients get more of a boost of energy yeah. Which is uh, very helpful in those cases. What about thyroid patients? Do you have mm-hmm. many of those on LDN? We do, um, specifically when they have autoimmune, uh, when the underlying cause of their thyroid issues is autoimmune, which is a vet, which I think is a large majority of them, and, you know, specifically Hashimoto's. And so when the doctor is open and and familiar with the uses of LDN and they do use that on those patients, we're able to see a reduction in dose in their thyroid medication supplementation and we're seeing thyroid antibodies reduce just by initiating LDN. Mm. That's amazing, isn't it, how that happens? Yes. Yeah. And what about, I, I wish it would be sorry. used more often, but, but in the ones that it's been using, yes, it, it is helping. But, I mean, the, people are using it for Hashimoto's, hyperthyroidism, mm-hmm. hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease. Mm-hmm. 
Sjogren's syndrome. I mean, they're all thyroid, aren't they, um, conditions? And there was mm-hmm. a, a paper written on Sjogren's syndrome last week, which mm-hmm. was interesting. Yeah, so... Yeah. And then you get people who think, how can LDM work for so many different conditions? But it's mm-hmm. to do with the autoimmune component. Uh, we didn't yeah. realise 15 years ago how well LDM worked for pain. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a condition that is autoimmune, which causes the pain for the LDM to work, which is... Yeah. Um, yeah, and the neuropathic pain, especially in um, diabetics, it, it works mm-hmm. really well for. Phantom limb pain as well mm-hmm. is a, another quite new thing that I've learned about. But there is always something happening with LDN. Uh, the um, I don't know whether it's common knowledge yet in California, but um, pain specialists are using ultra low dose naltrexone alongside mm-hmm. of opioids and weaning patients off the opioids. That's yeah. uh, very exciting. We're actually going to be filming um, a documentary on LDN mm-hmm. and pain mm-hmm. because there are so many patients who are addicted to pain medications through no fault of their own you know they yeah. haven't been buying drugs on a street corner these are prescription drugs and it's still the same isn't it to try and get off those medications you still go through the awful withdrawal symptoms but by using ultra low dose naltrexone where you um, start on a microdose and increase that slowly decrease the opioid And the people that I've spoken to who it worked really well for, it's amazing. Totally amazing. And quite quickly, because I thought you'd have to do it over a long period of time, but it doesn't seem to be as long Mm -hmm. as I would think. Yeah, and those ultra micro low doses uh, are generally very low. So it's really important for anybody who wants to try it. Um, They really need to be careful and, and understand instead of, the dosing we've been talking about thus far, which is 0.5 up to 4.5 milligrams, uh, with with people who are on opioids, we want, currently we want to go start at 0. 0. 0.0001 mm-hmm. milligram, yeah. so very ultra low dose, uh, and because we don't want to throw them into withdrawal, exactly, and and yeah, and and cause them more harm. Yeah. We we want to try to help them exactly, and it's something yeah. that you would never ever try and do on your own it have to be under medical supervision because you could yeah, co- yeah become unstuck yeah definitely yeah so what pain um sim- uh, sorry what pain conditions have you um your patients been using ldn for um i've seen it i've seen it used for some fibromyalgia patients and some neuropathic pain patients. We've uh, we've also included it in our. We do a lot of transdermal pain creams, so we are starting to add that into there, and seen a lot of a lot of great results with it. Um, I wish we could use it with uh, complex regional pain syndrome. The problem is those patients are generally all already on high doses of opioids, so we can't use it on them. But we have seen that, that it's really effective for those patients. But the patients that, that we have at our pharmacy, they're already on really high doses of opioids, so we, we, they, they just can't be on it. Well, maybe they could try the ultra-low dose. Yeah, they could. I just, you know, we, we're just starting to learn about it, and that's mm-hmm. the exciting thing about LDN is we're constantly in a learning yes, phase exactly. with this. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're learning more and more uses and more and more types of doses and and uh but yeah that's something that we we want to try to communicate to those physicians that are are treating those patients and uh hopefully we can we can get an open ear Mm -hmm. that uh that's open to learning more about it yes i mean dr pradeep chopra wrote a paper um, a long while ago now probably 2015 on complex regional pain syndrome and ldn that Mm -hmm. was um 
a very interesting paper. But there are more and more pain specialists looking into LDN for pain. And I have spoken mm -hmm. to many patients who are not on just morphine or fentanyl patches, but a cocktail of medication. And they say that their pain is still on a score of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, mm -hmm. 9 on a daily basis. And it's yeah. awful to think that people have to suffer like that, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm still okay. here. Okay, I thought I lost you for a second. No, no, no. Yeah, we, we have a, a young lady who comes to our pharmacy regularly who has the condition, and um, when, when it's acting up and she comes in, you can she's just kind of kraut, bent over and, and walking very slowly, and you can tell that her pain is definitely at a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. And even though she is currently on high doses of opioids, it, it's just not stopping it. The pain mm -hmm. is at a 10, and, and she, she can't seem to find any relief mm -hmm. at that point. It, <laughs> it's very, very hard to see someone suffer it is, like that. Isn't one, it is, not it? I mean, yeah. unless you've witnessed it and experienced what pain can be like, you think that, you know, you've got a headache, you take two paracetamol, you feel okay. But there, yeah. there is pain out there that does seem untreatable, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I can remember. Yeah, that's one of them. Yes, Dr. Samuel Devdatta, he's also a pain specialist, and he was telling me how it, it, he has a practice, but he also works in a hospital, and he will get mm -hmm. a, a phone call in the middle of the night that there's a patient, you know, screaming out in pain. The pain levels are a 10, and he will go in and he'll say, OK, this patient is on 14 painkillers on this cocktail they're having mm -hmm. too many pain medications. It's not going to work. You've got to take them off this, 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 and this. <laughs> yeah. And sorting it all out. But he's very for LDN and ultra low mm -hmm. dose. And mm -hmm. there, there is so much more coming in, this, in the next year, I am sure, because the PCCA are talking about LDN more, other conferences are talking about LDN. Mm -hmm. We have our LDN conference. Um, I, it's not that far from you, really, is it? California, Portland in Oregon? Yeah, Portland, uh-huh. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's not too far. Hopefully we will be able to get you there. Um, yeah, that would be great. Mm, because uh, meeting all these people and actually being able to put your questions to them it's mm -hmm. an amazing tool. Amazing tool. Yeah. Well, if you would like to tell our listeners how they can contact you and what your website okay. address is, that would be good. Yes. So the name of my pharmacy is Carmel Valley Pharmacy. The website is carmelvalleypharmacy.com. So to spell that, it's C A R M E L V A L L E Y Pharmacy, which P H A R M A C Y dot com. Uh, and the phone number is 858 481 4990. And lastly, my email, uh, and if you go to the website, you can find my email, but just to mention it, it is uh, Carmel Valley RX at yahoo.com and uh, i can be uh, reached at any uh, any of those uh, ways and uh, i would be happy to uh, receive any more questions or orders for prescriptions or any needs that you have with compounding or regular prescriptions well thank you for being our guest today it is my pleasure thank you uh, for the invite Carmel Valley Pharmacy is a family-owned independent pharmacy with a mission to provide the best pharmacy experience possible with exceptional customer service, access to knowledgeable pharmacists and cost-friendly prices. Call 858-481-4990 or carmelvalleypharmacy.com. Their friendly staff at their state-of-the-art compounding lab 
are waiting to help you. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.